I grew up in a good home. Both of my parents worked good jobs. Um, I did well in school. I played sports. I was on the swim team. I played volleyball and I played basketball. Um, I did all the after school activities that there was possible. I was a very, very busy kid. Danielle, now 24, describes her vibrant childhood, but rewind 10 years ago, a much darker story. And because I grew up sheltered, I had a lot of personal issues with my mother and with some of the rules that were in the home. Um, I wasn't able to do the things that I believed that most kids were able to do. Rules and restrictions Danielle refused to follow. I wasn't allowed to like spend the night over at people's houses. I didn't go to people's birthday parties or I wasn't able to go out and just play outside. Um, so I felt very, very restricted. One day I just decided that I wanted to be free from all of the constraints that were um, at home and I decided to run away. I had met an older gentleman who was 30 years old. And he asked me if I wanted to go to a party and I had never been to a party. And he asked me if I wanted to make money and I knew I needed money to survive. So I told him yes. I was willing to do anything to get away and that's a very dangerous place. Um, for a kid to be, and now I'm aware of that. That's very, very dangerous. My gut told me that I shouldn't have been doing it. We actually never made it to a party. He ended up dropping me off on the track, which is where women go to work. I uh, was still a virgin. I never been to sex ed class. I didn't even know what sex was and he handed me a pack of condoms and he just told me to walk. I had this car that was circling around me um, and eventually I got into his car. He had sex with me. Um, all I remember was that he was in a red car. And then after that, I can barely remember like the next like six months because I was so just numb to everything. Groomed is what happens when um, a trafficker or a pimp or someone who has more knowledge than you takes you and they basically train you and they build you up to be somebody who you probably wouldn't be without their help. The pain that I would um, receive, like when I was getting beat by the guys that I was with out on, out on the street, like it didn't compare to the pain that I felt at home. So at a point in time, I remember telling my mom that it hurt more when she would hit me than it did when any man could ever hit me because the emotional damage was so much worse. So we know there are more that are trapped in this life. Brian Steele is executive director here at the Phoenix Dream Center. He says according to ASU data, 2,000 young women at any given time are caught up in human trafficking here in Arizona. With the help of law enforcement, rehabilitation and shelter centers like this one are recovering thousands of women and young girls. Just here in Arizona. And you're talking young girls. Yeah. 11 to 17 um, are some of the younger ones that we serve. If they're uh, a young adult with a child, 30% of the kiddos that we serve come in and they're pregnant and they have a whole other layer yeah. of services that they need. So this site's really dedicated to the young adults. And then the 11 to 17 year olds, we have a specialized site just for them. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's heart wrenching sometimes, but <laughs> that's the bad news. The good news is there's, there's a community that cares and we're, we're blessed to be a part of that community um, with uh, Ms. McCain, uh, the governor and, and uh, the governor's office of youth, faith and family. It really is a strong force that we have in our, in our community that is doing, doing something pretty amazing about it. And we're glad to be a part of that. The Phoenix Dream Center saved me by giving me an opportunity. What I needed was an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to thrive. And this 
this place that just provided me like a safe place where I was able to sit there and to focus on the things that I needed to focus on. Um, their trauma-informed care is really what saved me. All the counseling, all the classes, the amazing staff that they have here. Um, it still has been the place where I'm able to reside where I feel safe and where I feel like I can move at the pace that I need to move at so that I can be successful. The women here in this program are um, their family. Their family to me, their family to our caregivers. This program just means the world to me. And the people that are in it, they mean the world to me. She had that hard shell, that vault that was built up. And slowly but surely, after time and after time, there was it was it started to dwindle down. Now, uh, when I look at myself, I don't even um, like I don't even recognize that person anymore. It's just giving people um, a new foundation. It's having them start from where they left off in the teenage years and just being able to to grow something different and having support piece, supportive people who've been out there um, in the streets before, who've lived on the streets, who've gone through, um, who can relate in some type of way of um, being out there in the streets. It's not easy. Uh, but being able to know that you, have, you can relate to them and that they know that you understand what it's like to be out there and to come alongside them in a way that is like family, but also in an authoritative figure with such grace and love it does so very well for every one of these women. Now that I'm older, I realize why a lot of the rules were set in place because um, of the roads that it took me down from wanting to be free of that kind of stuff. And even seeing you know, young girls today, I realize why my mom did a lot of the things that she did. So it wasn't until I was ready to change, but um, um, my mom was very, very patient and she waited many years for me to get myself back together, so now we do have a better relationship. We provide um, domestic violence classes, relearning relationships, substance abuse, group counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling, equine therapy, anger management. Um, we even have a ladies-only class that the girls love to go to, which teaches them ladies etiquette so they don't ever feel like they're out of place, um, how to walk through job interviews, everything that you can think of underneath the sun that um, that somebody would need in the world is we try to provide for them. We're always in need of volunteers all the time. And of course, since we're um, a 501c3, we work on a lot of donations. So in-kind donations always help. Um, they run, they love to be able to have smelly good stuff when it comes to like their hygiene, um, brooms, mops, trash cans, pillows, because we do have girls that come in and out of the program, um, bed sheets. Anything that you can think of that would be normally in your home is what we would need for here. We have a capacity to hold 35 beds for women, 12 beds for men, and six alumni beds. And we are full in almost every program. If I could say anything to a young lady that may be in a situation that may be wanting to run away, I would just, just suggest that they find someone that they trust to talk to. Um, even if it's not a parent, if it's a counselor, if it's someone else's parent, you know, find someone that you trust to talk to before jumping and making a decision that could change your life.